Welcome back to the Hawkeye Garage. I am Joe. This is going to be part two of my DIY GX470 uh, winch mount install uh, utilizing the uh, Harbor Freight winch plate, of course, because that's what we all use for stuff like this on all of the vehicles these days, it seems like. And uh, we are going to wrap up talking about uh, exactly how I did the install of this and kind of my final thoughts uh, going forward. So stay tuned. All right, how is this bad boy actually attached? Um, I have one, two, three, four half inch bolts going all the way through the uh, cr crash bar all the way across and then I have a bolt here that is currently not a half inch bolt, um, but that was kind of something that I changed after thinking about it. That is going to be another half inch bolt. We'll talk about that later. And then back here is another half inch bolt that goes all the way through this um, frame horn. Um, and then this piece is just like some one inch uh, steel. It's like a U-channel, structural U-channel. It's actually, a, I used a lot of that in my Forerunner mount. Um, so that goes through there. It's basically the perfect height for this to set on. Um, in order for me to finish this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to weld that piece of U-channel to this mount. Not necessarily 100% necessary because this is being bolted to it with what will be a half inch bolt that's going all the way through uh, the frame there uh, on both sides and that should be uh, plenty strong enough. Now, how this is actually structurally put together, where the weak points could be starting from the beginning at the hook, moving all the way back to how the winch is mounted, all the way back to how everything is mounted to the frame. And let's really take a hard look at what might be the weaknesses and really, honestly, what's not the weaknesses. All right, I'm gonna do this because I know a lot of my viewers, a lot of you guys really enjoy nerding out on this stuff like I do. So I don't wanna see any comments about how I talk too much down below. If you don't like it, too bad. Where are, let's go step by step, where the breaking points could be. Starting with the hook or whatever you're using as your device to hook the winch to whatever you're winching to, from, off of. The hook is the first weak point. Then the weak point after that is the pin holding the winch rope. I'm sorry, this is, uh, there we go. Holding the rope to the hook. That's the next weak point. The next weak point after that reach down here is the rope itself the end of the rope the whole entire rope that is the next weakest point after that the next weakest point is the actual structure of the winch itself now obviously you know the internal structure of the winch is not going to like explode you know shouldn't anyway uh, if you will uh, so what is the next point of contact the point of strength the point of pulling from there it's how the winch is attached to the vehicle, and in this point, how it's attached to the winch plate. It's got four, what looks to be three eighths bolts holding that on. So 95, 100 pounds of winching power transferred to the winch plate via four three eighths bolts. Now these, they are grade eight bolts. You should be using grade eight hardware and all of this. Um, and if you've actually ever dug into the actual tensile strength and shear strength of grade five versus grade eight, you should do that because you'd be surprised on how like overly strong grade eight stuff is and how adequately strong for what we're doing here grade five is. Anyway, that was definitely a tangent. So the whole winch is only held on by four three eighths bolts, which is not a lot when you really think about it. Then that plate is held on to this front crash bar with one, two, three, four, five, six, half inch bolts. Now, the bolts themselves are strong. This plate is made out of half inch steel. This crash bar itself, not super awesome steel. It's, it's pretty thin, but um, if you really wanted to do some improvement, you could, improvement, uh, you could weld um, some steel on the bottom of this crash bar all the way across where those bolts are coming through. And then that would just help transfer some of that strength across. I'm not going to do that. I feel 100% uh, happy and satisfied with how this is bolted to. 
how it's bolted together. Um, so moving on to the next point, how the crash bar is attached to the rest of the car. Um, and this has got a couple different variations. Um, we're going to, again, talk about this piece of steel that I have in the back here. So the plate itself is attached to this front crash bar um, with that plate or the, with that U-channel in the back in those two bolts. So really, this whole winch plate is mounted with eight half inch bolts to the front of this crash bar. Um, and again, I will openly admit that the steel that this crash bar is made out of is not, it's not like the strongest stuff ever. Yeah, we all know that. The, these frame horns are made out of the same structural type stuff that the rest of the frame is made out of. Moving on, how is the crash bar attached to the rest of the vehicle? By one, two, three, and then another one on the inside. So that's four and another four on the other side of the vehicle, four bolts. Now, uh, if you've done any Toyota winch installs, bumper installs, we all know that these are kind of the weak link. Um, a lot of the aftermarket companies come with different bolts. You're gonna pop those bolts out. They're like um, pinch welded, kind of spot welded into place from the other side. So you're gonna cut those off, pound them out, drill them out, and use bigger bolts. Well, a lot of good bigger bolts are going to do you is if the steel that the bolts are going through aren't strong enough to begin with, and what if the, the plate the inside, that inside plate to the left is welded to the frame horn. That is the absolute last point of contact, the last point of pulling, the last point of strength for this whole setup. If that plate isn't adequately strong enough and isn't adequately attached to the frame, that is going to be the weakest link. Not all the half inch bolts, not the huge crash bar, even though it's kind of not the greatest steel it's going to be that plate in there. Uh, most companies that I've seen that have made uh, are making these hidden winch mounts at least come with bigger bolts. Um, you have to pound those bolts out, cut them, drill them, whatever. Add bigger bolts. Some companies um, actually come with a, a way to sandwich that all together and it reinforces it or whatever. But they're still all they're they're still just bolting to that flange, and that is your weak point. That weld there. You know, I take that back. I think. The Southern style off-road, I think their bracket, it uses bigger bolts and it comes back and ties down here. So, but it's still, and then it ties into their whole piece that comes together. That's about the best one. They're also the most expensive. It has the best placement for the fair lead, in my opinion. I almost bought one of those, but again, I was in a time crunch and lead times were forever long. So I didn't, but, uh, in my opinion, that is the best um, and nicest option to go with. And finally, this is where I have my control box mounted. Um, over here I have, there's the factory support in here, and all I did was, there's a couple screws that go into the side of this box. Um, I took those screws out, lined up the holes on this uh, cross brace bracket, drilled the holes, put the screws back in, mounted that, to there and then I there's uh, comes with some brackets and stuff um, from the factory to mount that controller to the winch itself I just kind of used one of those bent it around cut it a little bit um, there's mounting holes in the bottom of this so I screwed that there and then put a uh, nut and a bolt uh, through right here and it is it's super secure right there I also did have to relocate um, this AC line a little bit uh, if you can see there there's a white uh, plastic clip um, this line used to sit um, up underneath inside that clip I've just um, gently uh, so this is an aluminum line, it's for the AC. You can bend these really easily. Just take your time, you can bend them with your hands. Don't use any tools. Um, real gentle bends, Don't you don't wanna kink it, you don't wanna break it. Um, and you can relocate, let's see, the wiring's in the way. Um, like I said, it was right back in here and I just moved it up and over. There's a couple bends um, back here that I just exaggerated a little bit to clear this back portion of the, uh, the mount, and I did that on my Forerunner as well. Really simple, you have to do that even on if you buy a pre-made uh, mount from a company, you still are gonna have to do that. Um, it's really easy, take your time, be gentle. 
But I hope that gave you guys a little insight on what it takes to do a DIY hidden winch mount or doesn't have to be a hidden winch mount if you're doing this on a different vehicle. But uh, give you some ideas on how to use that Harbor Freight winch tray, um, how to go about bolting it all together. You know, everything that I touched on earlier about uh, how I built this one based off of how I built my Forerunner uh, winch mount, of course, and I'll drop a link for that video down below. Everything kind of cumulative based on our accident that we had in the Forerunner, seeing how that mount stood up, um, how that was built, how it was mounted. Um, uh, after that accident kind of led me to how I've built this one and my belief in its reliability and strength if you there there you go that's that's the best way that I can put it anyway uh, if you are new to the channel please go ahead and hit that subscribe button give the video a thumbs up turn those notifications on we try to drop a video every Sunday uh, and if you have any more uh, in-depth questions about this or anything else, feel free to email me anytime, hawkeyeskunkworks at gmail.com. Uh, I have that written out in the description down below, along with links over to my Instagram and Facebook where I post uh, a lot of things a lot more often than uh, every Sunday and not just GX 470 content. Anyway, uh, until the next video drops, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.